Well, sure, it's all fun and games running Twitter until Tesla loses an eye. While the EV leader CEO Elon Musk tinkers with his new Twitter toy, Tesla shares are hitting fresh 52-week lows at this hour, down 5.7 percent to $180.14. They have been below that. The low of the session, 178 and a penny. All right. Uh, we do have just hours after rolling out a new official label for Twitter accounts. We've got Musk then tweeting, quote, you know what, I just killed it. Later tweeting, quote, we will keep what works and change what doesn't. After selling another four plus billion dollars in Tesla stock to fund his Twitter purchase, Musk is adding and subtracting features at a pretty torrid pace. Breaking in the last hour, Musk saying on Twitter spaces that Twitter could potentially offer money market accounts and peer-to-peer -peer payments. And that comes on the heels of a New York Times report that the social media company has filed registration paperwork that would give Twitter the ability to process payments, right, and make it a super app. The move harkens back to Musk's co-founding of online bank X.com, which later became PayPal. Max Levchin was one of his co-founders, now elbow deep in his newest business, Affirm. The buy now, pay later company just reported a wider than expected loss in its fiscal first quarter, but at the same time saw a 69% spike in active consumers. They've got an engaged consumer base. Let's bring in Affirm CEO and co-founder, Max Levchin. And, and Max, I promise this is not going to be an interview about Elon, but I do have to ask because of the headlines. I mean, if you were running Twitter, would you be doing this the way Elon is? I mean, do you talk to him? What's the thought process here, if you could guess? No one can do what Elon does the way Elon does it. So I think uh, high confidence that I, 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 I couldn't play Elon uh, even in the movie. Uh, look, I think uh, I think he's doing he's doing what he knows how to do best. He's uh, injecting pace and, and drive. And, uh, you know, all, all of us entrepreneurs look up to people who can create that amount of energy. Uh, certainly something I aspire to have. Yeah. I mean, uh, we do know one thing. He is one of a kind and he has built uh, SpaceX and Tesla into massive behemoths. All right. So we're not going to count him out. Uh, let's get to a firm. Affirm shares are hitting, uh, I believe, an all-time low right now, uh, $12 and change. Uh, you, you actually had a mixed picture here. You had a weaker-than-expected forecast, and I'd like to hear about that. But I also noted that you do have more than 85% of the transactions coming from repeat customers. So I look at that and I say, you know, your consumer base likes what you're doing. Let's, let's tackle the ugly piece first. What's going on there? Um, not sure it's ugly. Uh, in fact, I'd like to quibble with that. Uh, we are guiding to a 40% growth of GMV year on year as the US economy is almost surely entering a very real downturn. Um, stepping back a little bit, if you compare, you know, the, the, the reporting we just got done doing uh, at, at our quarterly earnings relative to the last year as a private company, we tripled gross merchandise volume, we tripled active consumers, we doubled the revenue, we tripled the re revenue less transaction cost. You know, the company has grown extraordinarily well and we recommitted to our shareholders that we will be profitable by the end of this fiscal year, which for us ends in, uh, in June. And so from where I sit, we've done a lot of things really well. We have an extraordinarily engaged user base, as you pointed out. Mm -hmm. We have continued to march towards profitability and Probably the most important thing, by the way, I, I wrote this really lengthy shareholder letter, which we just published yesterday. I really would love for all my shareholders to read it because one, there's a lot of work that went into it. And two, it just really, really explains the business well. The most important question I felt we needed to answer in writing, which we did, is what will happen to our credit quality as U.S. starts, U.S. consumers start stumbling a little bit, which is happening now. You can see in our numbers that our credit quality held up just as well as it did all through pre-pandemic, including through October. So we feel like we're in control of our fate. We'll get profitable and we'll keep marching. Well, to that point, and I, I should have qualified when I said ugly, I meant ugly for shareholders, not necessarily for what you see forward for the company. But to the point about uh, what you've just discussed here, a couple of things. Number one, uh, when it comes to a stumbling consumer, have you modeled for the possibility of a worst case scenario, a deeper than expected recession where they can't uh, pay off the loans. You've got the, you know, the four interest free payments, the pay in four, that's four payments every two weeks, or the greater part of your consumer base is people who are paying interest rates. Exactly. And uh, we absolutely model all kinds of scenarios. 
Probably the most important thing to understand about a firm as a lender is that we are truly a very short-term obligation creator, if you will, the origination, um, are, are just really, really short. So the weighted average life of our loan is 4.6 months. Mm. As U.S. consumer ability to pay and willingness to pay changes, we're able to react very, very nimbly. Over the last six, nine months, we've been managing our book really carefully to make sure that we, in fact, do continue hitting the numbers that we always wanted to hit on the credit side of things. And so I feel very, very good about our ability to manage through a downturn, which I do think things will probably get worse before they get better, and yet we will continue hitting our numbers. You've got some great partners among them. Amazon, a lot of stores joining a firm's site, but Peloton was one of your first sort of, at the time, platinum partners. This is the reason that you've lowered your guidance. Can you just explain why Peloton's problems are your problems? Well, I'm not sure Peloton's problems are my problems. Uh, Peloton's volume accounted for uh, around 2% of my volume uh, in the last quarter. So it's certainly no longer a highly concentrated merchant for us. That said, we love Peloton. I think they make an exceptional product. I do think that the my gym is my living room has dramatically changed after yeah. the pandemic began to fade. And uh, you know, people are apparently liking working out next to strangers in gyms and uh, it puts pressure on that kind of product. Max, we have to run. There's so much breaking news. I really appreciate you coming on. I know it's not easy you know, when a stock is dumping out to an all time low. So I appreciate that you came on. A lot of these CEOs sometimes will say, oh, I'm not gonna get out there and talk about it. I think the best thing you can do is, is come on our show. And I, I think that's important, so thank you. Thank you for having me and the best will, will come to us. So uh, I'm, I'm always happy to be here and preach the long-term value of a firm. Good to see you, Max, thanks.